I want to talk a little bit about our tools. Now notice here, this is a ruler, but I'm just using it as a straight edge. And what that means is I don't care about any markings, right? Again, we are doing synthetic geometry. We are not attaching any measurements to anything. Here's my straight edge, excuse me, it still has a tag on it, I never like that. Um, well, I'll take it off later. And here's a compass, this is my compass that I use. Okay, so this I, I use to draw straight lines, this I use to draw circles. Um, I'll just draw a little sketch on a piece of paper, here's a blank sheet of paper, right? Um, let's see if you can see this. Mm, not so good, right? I'll do it over here so you can sort of see me in profile. Just drawing a line. Another line. And then sort of a line that crosses those two. This is just a picture I'm drawing for future reference. Again, here's my compass. I'm not using it right now, but in case you want to draw circles with this, just remember this is how you do it, right? You kind of just you can draw a nice circle. That's not a very nice sheet of paper. Let me take a better one. You know, draw your circles. And we will be doing some construction starting. Next class, for now, just, you know, say, oh, yeah, I can, I can use a straight edge and compass to draw pictures, pictures that have geometric meaning, um, pictures that people have been drawing for millennia, right? Really millennia. Again, we're doing math, but we're also doing history of math here. Okay. So what did I promise in this video? I said we would be looking at Euclid's postulates, Euclid's famous postulates. Here they are. Oops, are they there? I believe so. So Euclid's postulates. Number one, to draw a straight line from any point to any point. Now I know the terminology straight line, I said, oh yes, we said uh, um, that was an infinite straight line. And so what we're really saying here, is, or what Euclid is saying in words that make a little more sense to me is that given any two points, distinct of course, you can draw a straight line that goes through those two points. And I should actually also add that there's just one line, right? You can't draw distinct lines between, that, that uh, hit those two points. So that's Euclid's first axiom, that given the two points, it can draw a line. Number two, to produce a finite straight line continuously in a straight line. Finite straight line, just to distinguish between um, straight line, well, again, terminology is somehow not 100% consistent here. Really what we mean is if you take a segment, so a finite portion of, of a line in modern terminology, then you can add on to that segment still remaining in a straight line indefinitely. Right? Continuously here really means indefinitely. Number three, to describe a circle with any center and radius. In other words, circles exist. Um, number four, that all right angles are equal to one another. Right? They don't coincide with one another. Equal here is really equal in size. Of course, as a modern human, you think of as a right, uh, of a right angle as a 90 degree angle, which is of course the best way to think about it. However, back in Euclid's time, people were not thinking about angle measurement, right? We're doing synthetic geometry here. So what's a right angle? Let's recall, what is a right angle? 
a right angle is an angle so that there's a straight line on one side of it and then there's the other line that delineates that angle and the twin on the other side of that second line right that angle has the same size right they're equal that's what it means to be a right angle and what euclid's fourth postulate is telling us is that no matter where you have this twin pair of angles, no matter where in the plane, the size of the right angle will be the same. The size of each of those, each one of those pair of angles will be the same. Finally, the fifth postulate, Euclid's famous fifth postulate, the one that holds in Euclidean geometry, but not in other geometries. This is it, and it's a mouthful, that if a straight line falling on two straight lines make the interior angles on the same side less than two right angles, the two straight lines, if produced indefinitely, meet on that side on which are the angles less than the two right angles. So here is a picture that I drew, and maybe it's not obvious to you, but this pair of interior angles right here, those two, those two together, what is the term? Make the two interior angles, make less than two right angles. Yeah, right. Again, we're sort of describing geometry with, without measurements without using addition and subtraction, that kind of thing, right? So it's somewhat cumbersome. And this is why I don't, do not actually recommend for you to read Euclid in the original or even extensively in the Heath translation, unless you happen to be interested in math history, right? In terms of le actually learning geometry, this is not the most elegant way to do it. It's not the most efficient way to do it. We will be reading Euclid for a little over a week just because there is a lot to learn. Okay, but again, in this cumbersome formulation, Euclid's fifth postulate tells us that if we have this kind of a situation, these two interior angles together add up to less than 180, then these two lines, if we continue them out far enough, will eventually meet. That's how Euclid thought about it. That is a way to express um, this important postulate. Another way to express it, much more recent, only about you know a couple hundred years old, yes, is Playfair's postulate. And this is the right way to think about the fifth postulate. Well, first of all, Playfair's postulate is indeed equivalent to um, Euclid's fifth postulate, and we will discuss more in, in great detail what that really means and how we can even make sense out of that statement. In a few weeks, we'll discuss that. Um, but suffice it to say for now that it is. So Playfair's postulate tells us that, or postulates that, given a line L and a point not incident, a point P not incident to L, there's a unique line incident to P that is parallel to L. There's neither two, nor is there none, right? There's exactly one parallel line to a line through a point not on that line. 